Hello guys, today I'm going to be talking about the top five oddballs that you can keep in a five gallon tank. Now before I get to video, here is my 20, this is my 20 gallon tank, I'm not filming my 10 gallon tank today. This tank has my red spores, I just said that in the uh, beginning of the video. No anyways, I'm actually going to tell you the list that I have. Now the first fish that is oddball relatively that you can keep in a five gallon tank is the honey garami not to be confused with the dwarf garami but anyways the honey garami is peaceful so since it's peaceful you can keep it with corydoras neon tetras i wouldn't recommend keeping it with something like pretty active and pretty hyper like uh, my resboras are pretty hyper probably wouldn't keep a honey garami in this tank so, like I said, they're pretty peaceful. They're not going to pick on your other fish, unlike certain garamis. Uh, they about, get about two inches, which for a five-gallon tank sounds big, but they don't use a crazy a lot of swimming space. It's not like they're doing laps around the tank 24-7, so five gallons is their minimum. The females are more pale than the males. And also, the males have that black spot, those black spots on their throat, and just like a black throat and stuff like that. Um, there is a pretty wide variety of these garamis, so like I said, just don't, if, you know, certain garamis can be really aggressive to fish, and certain garamis, like the honey garami, can just be really nice and can be compatible with everything. So, yeah, you can't have too many hyper fish with these, as I said, because... I'm going to go into it, because uh, if you've ever seen a Grammy before, they have those two lines, like, this is their body, and then they have two lines, which are really just, like, fins, kind of like a cat whisker reminds me of, going down on the bottom of their body. No doubt that with a hyperfish, a hyperfish could pick on them, or basically anything like that. The next fish on this list isn't a fish, so feel free to hate in the comments, as it is not a fish. It's the Mexican Dwarf Crayfish. Now, I've actually kept one of these. It was a pretty long time ago. But I actually had one of these. It was a very fun crustacean to keep, and I would recommend owning one. Mine was in a 10-gallon, but you can go down to 5 gallons. That's what I... The rule I was told at the fish store, and the rule I know from Google when I was doing my research for these guys, is you can have one for every 3 gallons. So I could have had three in my 10 gallon tank, but I had four neon tetras in there. And also, I didn't want them breeding, because they do lay a lot of eggs. Now anyways, these guys do mold, like all crayfish basically. My respores are mating over there, as you can see. They do mold. So if you ever see your crayfish rolling over on the gravel, don't get worried, he's not dying. He's perfectly fine, he's just molding. Sometimes after they mold, they do die. But that doesn't happen too, too often, but happens every so often. Pretty sad. Um, they're very soft after they mold. So you wouldn't want to hyperfish with these guys again. Because if my uh, Mexican dwarf is down here, my Rasboras behave very hyperly. They're always very active, as you can see. They, would, they might peck on him because he would be being still because he's soft. They would hide out so they don't be pecked on. But it can still happen, still a possibility, that's just what I'm warning you about. They can escape your fish tank. Um, so they, uh, basically, if I had any plants or rocks going very high, or even a filter is a main target that they usually escape from, you would want to just have some plastic on the back by your filter, like where that hole is cut for the filter to go into, just cover it all up with plastic and cardboard. That's what I did. My crayfish never escaped. He did climb a lot, though. My Mexican climbed a lot, but he never escaped. Um, so, yeah, you just don't want, like, a tall plant. Next thing on this list, they are semi-aggressive. Like, sometimes I see some online defending themselves for, like, food and stuff. Mine never did that. Mine was really shy, but, you know, if you get the wrong one, they can be slightly aggressive. One thing I also want to throw in is you cannot confuse these guys with just an orange crayfish. They're like, there are certain crayfish that have the body of electric blues and grow to be the same size as an electric blue crayfish, but they're just orange. 
I've seen them before, so you just have to make sure you don't get one of those guys. You can tell Mexican and just an orange crayfish that gets to be really big between the Mexicans on the back of their tail, on their tail, really. It's pale, it's not too, too orange, it's orange, but it's not that orange, and it has dark orange stripes going down it. Um, so you can't have any active fish like with these guys, as I said. And here's a story about mine actually climbing. So that very plant over there used to be in my 10-gallon tank, but then I moved it into my 20 because I thought it would look good. He, once he climbed that all the way to that top there, and if you can't see, this is a 20-gallon tank, so, you know, it's pretty tall. And he climbed all of that, came down in the morning, and he was on the top. So these guys do climb a lot. And my next fish that I'm going to be going on to is the chili rasbora. These guys are rasboras. Some are just some normal harlequin rasboras, and then yours are hengel rasboras, which is a more specific type of harlequin rasbora. But the chili rasbora is tiny, like way smaller than these guys. These guys aren't even that big, so that's, that's something. Um, chili rasbora is about three-fourths of an inch. It's very active, just like these guys, pretty hyper. Uh, it's easy to feed, pH 4 to 7, which I thought was incredible. 70 to 82 Fahrenheit for what these guys want to stay in degree wise. Schooling, they do school a lot. And they like dense planting. So if you have one of these guys, I would recommend having, if you had to school these guys, I would recommend they having a few plants in there. Real or fake, I'm more of a fake plant person, but that's just me. So yeah, moving on to the next fish. This, a lot of you, it's probably going to be your favorite fish on this list because it's always a fan favorite. The pea puffer. Now this is a 6 to 8 pH. Gets about 1 inch. Males have the line, uh, line on their belly and they're round. Females have spots and their spots are darker. Males and females have spots but females just have pretty dark spots. They are semi-aggressive to each other. I mean, they're not too aggressive to other fish, but they're semi-aggressive to each other, so that's something to look out for. Um, you can't have more than one male in a five-gallon tank, because I'm talking about five gallons here. That's the title of the video. I mean, if I had a big enough tank, I could have more than one male. Um, so, you should keep small fish with them, as they can be semi-aggressive to fish with long fins, but fish can also be semi-aggressive to them. So that's just something to look out for. Going on to my next and last fish, I've talked about it before, for oddballs for a 10-gallon, but it also works for a 5-gallon, and I uh, bet some of you didn't know that. I mean, you might have or you might not have. Now this fish is the Endler, so they are pretty hardy. 68 to 84 Fahrenheit proves my point that they are hardy. pH 5.5 to 8.4, that proves it even further on. And they're about 3 fourths to 2 inches because the females, if you've ever kept just like a dull gray molly, you know how it's like, you know, molly size, beefy, pretty long about two inches, something like that. That's a molly. The female endlers just look like mollies while the males look beautiful, have long fins. So they do look very different. So telling a male between a female is not hard at all. They do breed every 22 days. So, yeah, I'm not someone, I'm, a, I'm okay with baby fish. I mean, I like it when I have baby fish, but I was never the type of person to try to breed as I just don't have the room for those types of baby fish. Also, baby fish are very sensitive and hard to care for. So, they're very easy to feed. They don't really do anything that would need require any special meals. Like that Mexican dwarf earlier would need crab cuisine or pellets for shrimp. I mean, you could just give it quarry catfish bottom dwellers pellets and it would do fine with it. But that fish is so small, that pellet will almost be too big for it. Anyways, back to the antlers. That's about done for the antlers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like or dislike this video. Preferably subscribe and eat another pickle.